Well, I was so drunk I can't remember. <laughs> Wild Geese 3. <laughs> Man, the myth, the methane. <laughs> I wanted to pretend that I wasn't feeling a little jolly belly. Oh, I'm a fan of uh, Star Trek. Uh, what was your impression of this new uh, cast, this new group of actors? You, you'd been on Voyager. If, you're, if there's any alien nation fans, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> so you got, you got to join in from the very beginning in Broken Bow, the, the two hour movie of the week that launched the show. Uh, how much did you know of? you know, the overall story arc and your involvement, and what was your impression of this new group of actors that was taking over this? What a new wonderful, multi-faceted question that I'm now like going three to try to remember. One. So I can answer it. Uh, we're here, though, by the way, Gary. We, are, I know. we can, we can hear you. Room. Feel free to say whatever you want about the women. Truthfully, <laughs> let's talk about exactly bottles, the same. bottles of booze again. Uh, um, you think I <laughs> had very little knowledge about the franchise. In fact, when I was cast in this, I had, I had read for Star Trek uh, of some incarnation uh, about nine or ten times prior, and seemed to keep calling me back. I thought, what is the, 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 the Twilight Zone of the, of the 50s, uh, 60s, uh, where every actor just gets cranked? I, I, do you want a Chinese accent? Well, I, I had no idea, so I just took a stab and went in there, got the job, and said, oh, great, okay, that's who this Vulcan is, okay. And, but I, I knew nothing about Vulcans, the, the, the background and all that. So I got dressed, got the makeup, and showed up on the set. And I was only hired for the pilot. And I thought, hmm, I, if I want to come back, if this show goes, I want to come back and I want to be a worthy adversary to Archer. I want to be, I don't want to just be an impediment. I want to be a stick in the mud, concrete wall you can't get through. So I, I determined to be as subtly the biggest prick I could possibly be. And, um, my mother has always said that that works out for me. But once again, John Ben is he being you. <laughs> 14 of 40. I know, it's the battle of the pricks is, is really what, what our relationship yeah, I wondered what your deal was. Absolutely, it's just... But I, I, uh, I showed up and uh, Rick Berman says, you look like a Vulcan. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, who am I? Because I don't know anything about Vulcans. I thought this was going to be the as easiest job ever. Oh, they have no emotion, so you're just a, I'm just Mr. Robot Man. I don't know. I, I had no idea. And then he says, let's, let's walk. Let's walk. So we did a walk and talk. This is, and we're moment, we're 15 minutes away from, from shooting uh, my first scene. And, and uh, he told me about the, the history and the, the volcanic nature of, of their emotions and how they had to learn that Zen approach to uh, harnessing these emotions and controlling themselves less they, they completely uh, goes extinct. Uh, I said, oh wow, I should have I should have probably done my homework before I went into oh, the audition. But, uh, so at lunch, it, it, it seemed it seemed to, it seemed to work out uh, all right. And in that uh, in that one scene that we shot. Um, there's this one point where uh, I get I get furious, furious with Archer, and instead of containing my, I raise my voice, and everybody turns at me, it's very unvulcan, vulcanish of me. And Archer says, "Raising your voice to make a point, you have been on Earth too long." And I thought, ah, that's that's the key to the character. So that's what I, uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Seemed to have worked out all right. I was very happy with uh, with Manny Cotto. Cotto coming on last season, he had a particular pension for uh, Vulcan, so I'm happy to say. And he gave uh, the ambassador uh, plenty to do and uh, really brought a nice arc where uh, at once I, was, I hated the humans and then I tolerated them and eventually got to a point where I would be willing to sacrifice my life uh, in, in the cause of the Federation. So I was happy to do it and live long and prosper.